Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we have a few new foundations and a primer to try out. So we have the Givenchy Prism Libra Skin Caring Matte Foundation. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that the Skin Caring Glow is one of my go-to foundations. I use it all the time. And this is also a really nice foundation. So spoiler alert, I've actually been using it for a couple of months. So I can tell you now that I do really like this foundation. And we also have the Clay de Poe Radiant Cream Foundation. So we're gonna go over this, as well as the Clay de Poe Brightening Enhancer Veil. This has broad spectrum SPF 32 as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start with the Givenchy Prism Libra Skin Caring Matte Foundation. And this comes in 35 shades. It retails for 49 US dollars and it has just released here in the US. And this is a medium coverage matte finish. Here, we'll put a little bit here. And I typically wear shade 1-N95, but as I mentioned, I was, a little, I was able to get this one a little bit early. So I've been able to test this for a while. So this is kind of spread out. This, I'll leave that a little, you know, liquidy so you can kind of see the difference there as it dries. But So I was able to get this foundation early in shade 1-W105. So it's a little bit warmer than my typical shade and slightly darker, but, uh, you know, they had just a few shades out for testing and, you know, they were kind enough to send this to me. So this was a gifted foundation. I love the formula and actually this shade works for me um, when I, I like to mix it with my Skin Care and Glow foundation, just like I do with the um, the Clay de Poe Radiant Natural and the Radiant Matte. I love a mix of those and I do the same thing with this. So I've actually been wearing it for months that way, but today I have it on just this shade. And you can see that it still works on my skin. It's a little bit deeper and a little bit more warmer, or a little bit more yellow than what I typically wear. Let me show you the Skin Care and Glow in 1-N95. And just put that right here. So this is my normal shade. So I actually will be purchasing a uh, new version, a new one of these in the 1-N95 as well, which is my normal shade. But I figure, you know, might as well wait for a sale at this point since this one does work for me, you know, mixed as well. So <laughs> we have 1-W105 and 1-N95 in the glow here. So those are the two finishes and i have to say the skin care and glow this is one of my favorite foundations it's like a, a light to medium buildable coverage foundation and it's glowy without being pearly which you kind of get with some of the more glowy ones and it also doesn't have that greasy look it's more luminous than what i consider a true radiant foundation which can just look a little bit more pearly or shiny and this matte i have to say the closest matte foundation to this is the guerlain l'essentiel foundation this is the high perfection foundation that was not released here in the u.s uh finish wise on the skin that's what this one reminds me of so this is shade 00n and you can see the similarities in those two shades here so um, you know, it's actually pretty, pretty close. Now, finish wise, they're both going to be very nice mattes on the skin. I have to say though, that the Givenchy feels just a little bit more hydrating on my skin than the Guerlain does, but it's very, very close. Now, just a little bit of information from Givenchy. This foundation is a skincare infused, long lasting matte foundation that is lightweight and natural while blurring and addressing imperfections for up to 24 hours. So as you can see in these clips here, this is kind of what it looks like up close on me. It's a really nice foundation. It does give you kind of that blurred, perfected look on your skin. It doesn't settle into lines. It performs really well. And the coverage is medium. I consider these, I consider it like, um, 
yeah, I, I would say it's a true medium, but if you want to make it like a light medium, you can. So it's really nice. Some of the key ingredients that they're using is capucine extract for natural radiance, pink clay for nourishing the skin, and annatto extract, which encourages clarity and helps reduce the appearance of pores. This foundation is made with 97% natural origin ingredients and 82% skincare formula. It reduces the appearance of pores while addressing imperfections, mattifying, and hydrating. It also provides a buildable finish that lasts all day. And I just say, I feel like that is really accurate uh, for how it performs on the skin. It gives you that matte look on the skin without being drying. There's like a, a little bit of a luminous matte finish. And I do have a, a demo that you'll see when we talk about the, uh, the primer here um, of using this foundation with and without that. You can see that there's still a luminosity even without a more luminous primer. So today, the foundation I, or the primer that I have on here is the Surat Perfectionist Primer, which is a more mattifying primer. And I use this particularly so that you can see the luminosity that the foundation itself brings. So when it says it's hydrating, I wouldn't say, you know, it's hydrating, it's getting like greasy or anything, but it's not drying to the skin at all. It's going to keep your skin feeling nice and fresh and not tight at all throughout the day. At least it does for me. I have normal to slightly dry skin. Now, clinical results, according to Givenchy, in a test on 102 women aged 20 to 40 years old for one week, the results included 93% of women said the product provides a perfect perfecting blurring effect 91% of women reported a smooth skin texture and 91% of women noted improved skin clarity uh as to whether or not I've noticed skin clarity honestly my skin is pretty clear for the most part so I can't say any I can't make any judgment there however I definitely did not have any breakouts or anything related to this foundation. So I think it's done a great job. One of the best things about this foundation, I think, is also the price point. You're getting like a luxury formulation that performs really well, looks fantastic on the skin, and is priced a lot less, more attractively. <laughs> it's definitely a more attractive price than some of the higher priced foundations that you know I have in love like the clay to po radiant matte and the radiant natural so this is a swatch dried here for this is the shade 1-w105 we have the skin caring glow version in 1-n95 which would be the color I would purchase again and we have the Guerlain in 00n and you can see that those two shades end up you know, drying to be pretty much the same. So it definitely is a shade that will work for me as well. So if you're slightly warmer than I am, this would be a good shade for you. Now, just a fresh swatch here to show you the oxidation level of this. And that's one of the things I like about this. There is, you know, it, it's drying. So when it dries, it will oxidize a little bit, but it's not gonna be a huge drastic difference. Um, from what you'd expect, at least compared to certain others like the Makeup Forever and so forth. So there is some oxidation that will occur. I feel like oxidation is always a little bit more evident in a matte foundation as well. Next, let's take a look at the Clay de Peau Radiant Cream Foundation. So this comes in 24 shades. It retails for $130 US dollars. And I have shade I-10, which is my normal Clay de Peau shade. So this is a squeeze tube. I think the squeeze tube, you know, it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to the squeeze tube um, and not get too much product out because with this one, a little bit goes a long way. So even though it's kind of, you know, seems like a small packaging, it's actually, it's 0.88 ounces or 21 milliliters. By the way, the Givenchy is 30 milliliters. Yes, and it's made in France with um, a one year shelf life. The Clay de Peau is going to be made in the US and it has SPF in here as well. So we have a broad spectrum SPF 25. There's octanoxate 4.4%, titanium dioxide of 1.2%. So 
this foundation here though, even though it seems small, you really don't need a lot of it because it is a thicker formulation. A little bit does go a long way. And this is a, a, a true full coverage foundation. So this here shade I-10, and you can see that that's going to be closer to the 1-N95 in Givenchy. So as you're looking at the wear test for this foundation, let's go over a few details. According to Clay de Poe, this is a skincare-based cream foundation with moisturizing medium to full coverage that visibly perfects skin with a naturally dewy, lustrous finish. It provides exceptional all-day wear that resists creasing and caking, proven flawless for 24 hours. I did not test it for 24 hours, but you can see even after a lengthy wear test, it still looks great. It's formulated with deeply hydrating ingredients, comfort skin while minimizing the look of signs of aging and imperfections. Skin feels smooth and moisturized even after makeup is removed. And I have to say that is true. There's definitely a hydrating quality of this foundation that even when you move it, uh, remove it, it feels like your skin still has a little bit of moisturizer on. I have to say the first time I removed it, I did have to wonder whether or not my cleanser had really gotten all of the makeup off. It definitely did, but you are left with a little bit, you know, it just feels like a little bit more moisturized. So definitely something interesting to note with this foundation. If you have very dry skin, this might be one that you would really like. Uh, some other notes about this foundation, and I found this very interesting. Like the mind, skin is smart. And this is directly from the Clay Depot website. Radiant Cream Foundation SPF 25 leverages skin intelligence, capitalized, to support your skin's maximum ability to restore and protect itself. This product helps you respond to the good, such as nutrients, sleep, and moisture, and the bad, such as pollution, stress, and dryness, for your best skin. It imbues the skin with 24-hour moisture and with continued use, improves skin smoothness and radiance with dimini and diminishes the look of signs of aging, such as fine lines from within. So, I found the fact this whole skin intelligence thing to be very interesting. Um, you know, I've been wearing this foundation for about a week now, so I've been testing it out. I definitely notice increased hydration to my skin. This is probably the most moisturizing foundation I've ever used. Um, I have never found anything that, even though it feel, you know, you find foundations they feel comfortable and moisturizing while they're on, but this is the only one I've ever used where I still feel that moisture after removing the makeup. So I found that really interesting, whether it really helps your skin respond to different stressors and environmental factors. Uh, that is really hard to say. I think that's a pretty hefty claim there, uh, but I found it very interesting. They did do clinical tests on 20 women in the US in Arizona specifically in a dry environment to kind of test all of these claims with the moisture and so forth. So a few key ingredients here. We have the Skin Empowering Illuminator, which is powered by precious platinum gold and silk. And that's one of the things that is supposed to help your skin's ability to defend itself against internal and external stressors. Chestnut rose of fruit extract is defending against oxidation and keeping your color looking true. We also have the lasting control function, which resists shine from excess sebum, dullness, and prevents creasing. And the light empowering enhancer controls light on both the surface of the skin and beneath it to amplify that radiant finish. So um, the Potentia Erecta Root Extract is an ultra silky ingredient known to lock in moisture to improve the looks of fine lines and provide a dewy look. Now, as you can see from some of these little clips here, I have used this with different primers. I've tested it with the Tom Ford, the new primer, the Traceless Soft Matte Primer. I've tested it with the Surat Dew Drop. I've tested it without a primer at all, as well as with the new Clay de Peau Brightening Enhancer Veil. This is a very dewy, moisture-rich looking foundation. I find it to be pretty radiant on its own. So for me, if you are somebody who doesn't want to look incredibly dewy, 
Um, I would recommend using a more matte primer with this compared to something more dewy or hydrating. For me, my skin does not need something as hydrating as the Dior Forever Skin Veil Primer. I also tried this one. This is, it's just a little bit too much for me. Again, I have normal to slightly dry skin. Uh, so th that combination is just a little bit too heavy. The Surat Perfectionist Primer is my go-to with this foundation because I think I personally want something a little bit more matte and less dewy because the foundation on its own already has so much of that. I also have been enjoying the Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Primer with this. Now the Clay de Peau Brightening Enhancer Veil, I find, this is a very radiant product as well. We'll get to this in just a minute, but I find it personally to be too much for me to use with the Clay de Peau Radiant Cream Foundation. Mixing the two of these together gives you a little bit more of that pearly effect on the skin. So I think sometimes radiant glowy foundations, when they're mixed with something more luminous as well, or they are very luminous on their own, they can kind of give you that swirly pearly look on the skin when the light hits it. And I feel like that combination is just a little bit too much and a little bit too radiant for me. If you have very dry skin though, that might be something that you'd like if you're trying to look very dewy. So overall, I think this is a really nice full coverage foundation. And again, they say medium to full coverage. I find if you wanna go medium with this, you really need to use just the tiniest bit of foundation. So this is a fresh sample of it. So you can see the oxidation level. So you can see there's gonna be very little oxidation between the fresh and the dry sample here. So the, what was it, the chestnut extract? Yes, the chestnut rosa fruit extract really seems to be doing its job there. So it really does keep color very true. And I would have to say that for me, for a full face, if I want to go um, on the lighter end of the fuller coverage, this is the amount that I would use. So you can see how little that really is. And that will give you the lighter end of full coverage, but obviously you can go up from there. And let's move on to the Brightening Enhancer Veil. So this is Broad Spectrum SPF 32. It's a sunscreen primer, and I still would recommend using a separate sunscreen uh, underneath as well. This retails for 80 US dollars. It's 30 milliliters and there is an expiration date on the bottom. Mine is June 2023 and this is also going to be made in the US. Now you can hear it's liquidy. This reminds me more of some of the Asian sunscreens, the sun milks and things like that where you definitely want to shake it and you can hear the little shaker ball inside and you can see that it is going to be a very thin, liquidy kind of primer. So the color of this itself, you can see is actually gonna be a soft pink. So color-wise, this reminds me of the Chanel Rosy Light Drops. So let me just show you the two of those. So we've got the Rosy Light Drops and the Clay de Pau. You can see the Rosy Light Drops are a little bit cooler in tone but when you spread them out on the skin, they're gonna be pretty similar. And the radiance level is a little bit higher with the Chanel, it's a little bit pearlier, but I feel like this has the same amount of shine and sheen, it's just perhaps a little bit more finely milled in there. And since it is a thinner liquid, you can disperse it a little bit more easily. But regardless, this is definitely a very radiant, luminous looking mixture. So. You can see when we go through these clips, what the matte, the Givenchy matte foundation looks like with the luminous uh, primer versus the more matte primer as well. So according to Clay de Peau, this is a brightening skincare primer that enhances appearance of clarity and luminosity while refining skin's texture and longevity of makeup. With continued use, skin looks clearer and brighter with a healthy looking glow. It instantly blurs the visibility of dark spots and uneven skin tone while enhancing wear and finish of makeup for a fresh and luminous look. Infuses skin with 16 hours of skin, skin quenching hydration. So uh, just like the foundation, it also talks about the skin intelligence. 
Uh, so that is going to be a, a component, a complex that they have in here with their ingredients. It is lightweight, has a serum-like texture that dries down to a dewy finish and instantly melts into skin. It leaves skin cushiony, soft, and smooth, creating the perfect canvas for foundation application that follows. And it helps, per, you know, it has SPF, so it's gonna help protect skin from UV rays. So for me, again, here is it dried down. So this is the clay de peau. This is the Chanel. You can see the Chanel has just a little bit more more of a like a metallic reflect compared to the clay de peau. Now I have used this clay de peau with a variety of uh, different foundations to test this out now. So I have worn this with the Givenchy. I've worn it with this clay de peau as well as the clay de peau matte and radiant natural and the Chanel Ultra Latent, which is a matte foundation as well. This is a pretty, luminous looking primer. I have also used this just on my skin with nothing else. Now for me, this is just a little bit too luminous for me to use on its own. However, I think it's a really great base for matte foundations in general, especially if you have something that's a little bit more of a flatter matte. I think this really gives it a little extra luminosity there without disturbing the matte finish. So you can still have that matte finish of your foundation. I have to say, as a primer, it does seem to help with the longevity of the makeup looking like more perfected. It adds that luminosity. So I do think it's actually a really nice product. Um, I have a hard time finding primers that I love and perform really well. And I have to say that, you know, I think this one is really nice. Is it one that beats either my Surat Perfection Eats Primer or my Dior Forever Skin Veil? For me, it doesn't because I think I am, it's a little bit more radiant than what I would use most of the time. However, it's definitely something that I would incorporate into my routine periodically with certain products. I think it is very radiant though. And I have to say though, other radiant primers I've used have ended up feeling like a little greasy on the skin or they end up Sometimes there's like compatibility issues where over time it seems to break through the foundation. I have had absolutely no issues with this one. I think it's a very, very nice formula and I think that it performs really well. So I am really impressed with the performance of this. As you can see though, it is a small 30 milliliter, you know, container here for 80 US dollars. Um, in contrast, my favorite is actually more expensive. This is the Surat Perfectionist Primer, 30 milliliters, 95 US dollars. And the uh, Dior is actually less expensive. So, you know, this kind of falls, not quite the middle, but somewhere close to the middle of my two favorites. I do think if you are looking for something that is dewy, if you're somebody who likes to put, you know, some of those liquid illuminators on underneath your foundation, this is a good option if you are looking for something like that. I think this works really well as a highlighter underneath foundations as well if you just want to put it on the cheeks. However, I'm sure a lot of people have liquid highlighters that they already do that with. If you're somebody though who likes to do that and you have had a hard time finding something that works well with your foundation formula or maybe you have oily skin and over time your foundation doesn't perform as well when you do that, this is a good option for those situations because it really does help with the longevity. So hopefully that information will help somebody there. And again, this is what it looks like when it is liquid and this is it kind of buffed in. So you can see it's definitely gonna be there. And texturally, it feels silky. I can definitely feel the product. It doesn't feel like it's completely soaked into the skin or anything. I feel it more like like you had put a silky moisturizer on, like something lightweight. So it feels like there's a silky layer on your skin, but you can feel a little bit of dewiness from it. All right, so let's look at a few foundation comparisons. This is the Clay de Peau Radiant Matte in I-10. So you can see how consistent the color is with the cream foundation. Here's the Radiant Natural, also in I-10. So I feel like 
the cream foundation kind of fits right in there. They're all pretty much the same. It's so a few other comparisons. This is the Kogendo Aqua Foundation. This one is 002. I'm gonna put this one right here so you can see this one matched more with the Givenchy. And here's the Kogendo Aqua in 012, which is going to match better with, let's get a little bit more there. This is gonna match better with the I-10. And we're just gonna do a couple more. This is the Chanel number no. one to Chanel foundation. This is in shade BD01. And Chanel Le Beige in BR12. And let me just put the Givenchy near that one as well. So here's the Givenchy. We'll just put it right here in between these two. All right, so just a review of what we have here. We have the Givenchy Prism Libre Matte in 1-W105. This is a Givenchy Skin Care and Glow in 1-N95. This is the Guerlain High Perfection, the Lessential High Perfection 00N. You can see that that eventually will dry just slightly deeper than the Givenchy. And then we have the Clay de Peau Radiant Cream Foundation in I-10 the Radiant Matte and the Radiant Natural in I-10. This is the Kogendo Aqua in 012, the Chanel number no. one to Chanel in BD01. Here we have the Kogendo Aqua in 002, the Chanel Healthy Glow Lay Beige in BR12. And again, this is going to be the Givenchy Matte in 1-W105. And up here, this is the Clay de Peau Radiant Cream again in I-10, the Chanel Rosy Light Drops, and this is the Clay de Peau Brightening Enhancer Veil. Now, my final thoughts on these, I have to say, I think all of these products are really nice. I think it depends what you're looking for. I think if you are looking for a matte foundation, this is a really great option. And again, one of my favorite things to do with matte foundations is I personally love to mix a radiant foundation with a matte foundation, and I feel like I get the perfect finish. This mixes very well with the Givenchy Prism Libra Skin Care and Glow Foundation, which is what I do quite a bit. So over the last few months, you know, this has been kind of my foundation of choice that I've been wearing when I'm not testing something. So I've been mixing the two of them together. I think it just gives a really nice finish. You can see on its own though, this Givenchy matte has a luminous quality itself. It's not a flat matte. There is light reflecting qualities to it and it just, it looks really nice on the skin. So I think it's a really great option to have. And if you have watched my foundation summation, I will have a second part with, with these as well as some other new foundations. I just got the new Suku one in. So in there, one of my favorite things is mixing the Clay de Peau Radiant Matte and the Radiant Natural. This actually does mix with those as well. So if, for example, you have one of the Clay de Peau's and you wanted to get another one to mix in there, I personally like to kind of stay with the same brand and mix them, but you don't have to. It does, I have tried it out and it works well to mix the Givenchy Matte with the matte here with the uh, Clay de Peau radiant and vice versa. So, you know, that is another option as well, especially if you're somebody who doesn't wear matte option, uh, matte foundations very often on their own. It's a really good option. And I feel like the price is really affordable on this. So especially if you, you know, get it during the Sephora sale or something, which by the way is happening in April, beginning of April. So, um, I personally really like this. I do plan on picking one up in my shade 1-N95 as well. And then as for the Clay de Peau Radiant Cream, I think this is really great if you're looking for a full coverage foundation. My preference is a medium coverage foundation. And for me to get medium, you know, it's really going to be a fuller medium that you can get with this and you really need just a little bit. So that's kind of my preference. It took me a little bit of trial and error to get the right amount, but it's a very luminous foundation. So I like the way it looks. I think my skin looks great with it. 
but it's not an everyday foundation for me because it's just a little bit heavier and a little bit more moisturizing than what I need. Definitely, if you have oily skin, I would say stay away from this. Um, but if you have drier skin, I think this could be a really great foundation. It's a really good choice. And again, if you want to go medium, you know, I would either use a little bit less and kind of spread it out, but you can also mix this. I have tried mixing this as well to kind of dilute the coverage a little bit. You can mix it with one of the other clay to po foundations if you like, but what I've done is actually, I tend to prefer to mix it with maybe like a light moisturizer or with the primer itself. So I don't put the primer on. I mix a little bit of the primer and I've tried it with the Brightening Enhancer Veil. That's honestly, that's the only one I've tried it with so far, but take a little bit of the primer and a little bit of this and mix that. You get this really luminous finish and it's just slightly lighter on the skin than if you were to layer them. So that's another option. But again, if you're looking for full coverage, this is a really great option. The Brightening Enhancer Veil, this is not going to be a go-to for me because it's a little bit too luminous and too radiant for me for a regular daily uh, wear. However, this is great for special occasions. It performs really well. If you have drier skin and you want that more luminous look, I think this is a really great product for it. And I think this works really well under matte foundations to give them a little bit extra lift. Now, something to mention about all of these products here, all of these have fragrance. If you're familiar with Clay de Pro um, products, they all have the same fragrance. The primer has it, the foundation has it. They all have that Clay de Pro signature fragrance. The Givenchy foundation also has fragrance. So um, just something to note, I don't find any of them to be incredibly overpowering with the fragrance. None of them bother me, but you know, they are in there. So definitely, you know, if you're looking for something fragrance free, these will not be options for you. So I hope this was helpful. And one last thing I wanted to mention about the Givenchy foundation, this, and you saw this during the wear test, but I actually have it paired with the Bobbi Brown crushed creamy color for cheeks and lips in pink punch. And it's kind of, you know, it's one of these like creamy cheek products that, you know, it's like a liquid and it's very like luminous on its own. And it performs really well with this. There's no lift off of the foundation. It doesn't disturb the foundation. Everything, you know, your foundation sets. I've used it with several cream products and it really performs well. The Clay de Po, I feel like also performs well with uh, the creamy products, but you do need to make sure you give it like a minute or two to kind of set on your skin before using it, or you might see a little bit of movement with that product in the beginning. But if you give it a few minutes to kind of set, it works well with those as well. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful and I will see you very soon. So have a great day and stay safe and healthy.